Hello, hello, it's John Mark W. hitting you with the word again. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'm, according to my analytics, I have a lot of viewers and you guys uh, have not subscribed yet. So please do that. Um, this right here is going to be one of my Bible videos. Uh, I do a lot of stuff on my page. If you guys are new and if you, this is the first video you're listening to, I do um, biblical truth sessions, which basically I pick a chapter of the Bible and I read it. And as of right now, I'm doing that in order. I've been doing this for a while, ever since COVID-19 started on and off. When I wasn't that busy, I could do more when, uh, you know, the workload was low, but now the workload is high. I'm doing some other things on the side. And so I do not have that much time to get into it, which is why I'm not posting <clears throat> as much as I'd like to, but I do have a little time now and I'm definitely getting on here. And that's why you're hearing me right now. Um, these videos are just to educate people about the Word of God, to share the truth of the Word of God, not just talk about it, not just read it, but at the end of the video, I'm going to be proclaiming and demonstrating the mighty power of Jesus Christ. So please uh, stay tuned for that. But you clicked on this video not to hear just a wisdom of a man or just to hear me talk and babble on. You wanted to hear the truth of the Word of God. I'm guessing that's why you're here. So that's what I'm going to get into right away. And you guys know how I start a lot of my other videos. If you heard it, there have been many lore, many stories, many movies, many things written. But all of them, whether they know it or not, should give credit to this, the original manuscript. Things that have been written before other things have been written. This is the original things. It's for us human beings, God's creations. It tells us how to treat other people. It tells us how to live. It tells us how to not just to live and treat other people, but how to do it in a righteous way to where nobody can really hold anything or hate you. If they do hate you and you're following this, the Bible says to count it as a joy because they're hating you because that's the devil's hate in them, and that's the same hate that once hated Jesus for doing absolutely nothing wrong. So when people hate you just because you love Jesus, that is literally their problem and not a problem of yours. And Jesus says this to his disciples later on in the New Testament as we read that. But now, to get things up and going, we're going to leave off where we left off last time. We did Exodus 21, which spoke about the fair treatment of slaves. So we debunked the myth that people say the Bible condones slavery. It talked about treating them right, okay? And if you did have them. And, you know, like I said, slaves is one of those terms that can roughly be translated into indentured servant, a servant, a family servant, a uh, 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 um, someone who is wasn't a part of the family but added to the family and they have tasks that they do to help support the family, you know. And so that's, that's basically what that is. It was a different time period back then, way before the American slavery, so totally different view on what a slave was, okay. Um, so yes. Now we're moving on the protection of property. Exodus 22, New Living Translation is the translation I'm going to use. You can read your own Bible or follow along. I recommend you do that. Make sure I'm not saying anything false. Make sure I am do, you know, reading according to God's word because this is what we follow if we're Christian and if we love the Lord, that's what we do. Oh yeah, and also, I say this on all my videos. I haven't done a video in a long time, so you have to excuse me. I am not a pastor. I am not a prophet. I am not, I don't hold that office. I do not rule over people's lives. In other words, I do not, I'm not put in charge of people to, um, you know, tell them what they should do. I do not micromanage. I do not like to micromanage. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 just managing my own life is a good enough task. I do not need to manage other people's lives. I'm not, uh, Forcing anyone to do anything. You've clicked on this video because you want to, and you don't even have to listen to me if you don't want to. Click off if you think I'm full of bull crap. You do not have to stay and listen to my videos. I put this out, he out here because of COVID-19. People's ch chances of going to church are much less, especially when you're put on this rotation stuff. 
you got a church of about 650, 700 people, you're, you're going to be on a, a 50 group people rotation, you got the sound people there, you got the band people there, you have the pastor there, and the, the skeleton crew there, plus the people, you're literally thinking about maybe about 40 or 30 something people, every service, and if you have three services a week, you'll literally probably only be going to church maybe once every month and a half or once every two months, once every two months and a half, something like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's just, I would rather just, you know, even my church services of my church that I go to, I just watch them online to stay safe. I don't want to be catching no nothing. I've been fine this whole time. Uh, didn't need any uh, vaccine, didn't need any treatment, didn't need to go and get checked. I know my body, my body is good. I try to eat the same things over and over, the healthy good stuff that I need. Try to wait, raise my core temperature by running. I recommend you guys raising your core temperature, even the Chinese, those over in the Chinese country where the virus started, they inhale steam, hot water, they drink hot tea, they inhale hot stuff, drink hot stuff, and that hot stuff is enough to keep the COVID at bay. If you don't want to be drinking that hot stuff or eating hot stuff all the time, like me, I, I live on a certain island and it's 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 hot, and I get hot so easily. I mean, everybody who knows me knows this. You could you could ask my coworkers. You could ask people who know me. I mean, I get hot fast. I start sweating. I barely even did anything, or I I, I just sweat easily. You know, because of the humidity where I am at, and so. It's like, it's very, very, very annoying for me even to wear the mask, even do all that stuff, even to consume hot things. So what I would do is I would just run, you know, at least if you can't run every day, at least run every other day. Just some pointers. You know, the media makes this thing a lot bigger than it is. And they're just trying to scare folks with scare tactics, making you think, oh, it's hopeless and there's nothing you can do and everybody's going to die. And oh, wow, look, look how things are going all around the world. I'm so scared. That's the devil. The devil likes to do that. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. This is what we have to remember about our enemy. He will trick you to thinking that everything is okay and everything is fine and dandy. And it is absolutely not. You're on your way to burn in hell with him. He's not ruling in hell. He's, got, he's tricked some people to think that hell is his domain and he is in charge there. No, God is in charge everywhere and he is down there in chains. He is down there locked up. He's not ruling anything. He's not in charge of anything. Okay? He is not God's rival. He's weaker than God. He's stronger than us humans, but if you got God on your side, you can see past his lies and past his foolishness. I feel sorry for those who are drinking the devil's Kool-Aid, who are drinking, eating the same old fried ice cream he's been serving all these years, ever since the beginning in the Garden of Eden. He's got some people tricked, bamboozled, hoodwinked. And, and they just fall for it because I don't know. They don't want to do the God thing. So they, I guess they say, oh, well, I'm just going to do the devil because at least I get to do whatever I want and it feels good. And that's what sin does. It, it feels good for a season. You might enjoy it for a season, but eventually you're, if you are a human being and you have the spirit of God in you, whether it's laying dormant or whether you're using it, you eventually have to come to terms and say, you know what? I can no longer live this way. I can no longer serve the devil myself or whatever I'm serving that isn't God. God has to be put in his rightful place. If not, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. You'll have extra stress, extra anxiety, extra bull crap to deal with, and it's going to feel unbearable and you'll have no hope. That's one thing the devil can give you. He can give you just about anything except peace of mind, hope, and all the things Jesus Christ can give you. It's crazy. He can give you money. He can give you fame. He can give you friends. He can even give you sex and, and all this other weird stuff that, you know, that you might want and, and, and sex, sexually and moral things. He can give you all kinds of things, but he cannot give you peace of mind. <laughs> he cannot take the fear of death away. He cannot change somebody, restore a marriage. He cannot 
build back up. He cannot do anything like that. And he'll trick people having you thinking everything is okay when it is not. And when I was in the world and before I got saved, I thought, you know, I, I felt something was wrong. But that was because I was raised in a Christian home, so the seeds of life were already planted in me. Not everybody has that privilege. Before you really get saved, and you're out there, most people that I talked to that were sinners before, and I do have friends who were sinners before, most all my friends were, they will tell you, yeah, you think nothing's going on. You just think this is how it is. This is life. You know what I'm saying? And you just, you know, you're in the worldly system. It's, it's like you are just following the freaking road everybody's going down until you see the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Anyway, you guys got to forgive me for the long introductions. I just had to say that. And that's the wonderful thing. You can even read, read about the major prophets in the Old Testaments and the minor prophets. Doesn't matter what the Bible calls them. They were all prophets of God. They were all preachers of righteousness. They were all pastors in their time period, in their generation. Okay? They were saying things that they did not understand why they were saying it, but they know that they were moved by the Spirit of God to say it. And little did they know they were revealing truths about our world, about planets, about all kinds of things that they had no clue about. But the Lord allowed them to speak this truth to their generation in their time period. I mean, there are so many scientific facts linked to the Bible. It is amazing. Okay? I recommend seeing the scientific facts from the Bible. Ray Comfort has a video on that on YouTube. I can't recommend that more, more than enough. For those people who think that science and the Word of God are two different things and could never link. And anyone knows that's been alive for a while and who knows who Jesus Christ is, know that if the more and more you really... Look into science, the more and more it will point you toward the Creator. Because He's the one where it all comes from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The only people that will deny this is people who want to be willfully ignorant or willfully stupid against the Word of God, against the many proofs that are around the world, against the Creator God that gives them the very breath that they're breathing. And to me, my friends, that is a sad place to be. I can't do it. I know people who do it. There's people who don't talk to me anymore because I told them straight up, hey, you're not going to tell me to be quiet about this. If you bring it up and you're going to tell me I can't talk about it to let you know you're bringing it up in a negative way, I'm going to bring it up in the truthful way, the right way, what the Bible says. You got people who think that Jesus and God is the problem. He is the source of all the problems in the whole entire world. I had to tell some folks that you're going to have to miss me with that bull crap. I'm not going to sit here and have you tell me this because you, you came too late. I've already seen God's goodness. I've already seen his grace. I speak to him daily. He, I pray to him. I read the word. I see his truth in my family, in other people's lives, all around me, on this earth, through the other worlds that have been created by him. Only God could do something. Like what we have. Create our solar system. All of these stars. Make things in such a way where we're not die, where we're not dead and we're not fried up by the sun. God, see, we don't live on Mercury. We don't live on Mars. We don't live on all those other planets. We live on Earth. Because God created this place for us to live. The plants, the food, the things we like to eat. It was created for us to enjoy. You think that's by accident? You think that that's just, it was a big bang and just splattered out like that? No, man, that, is, <laughs> that ain't how it is. But the devil would love you to think that. The devil wants us to believe anything and everything as long as it goes against what the Bible says. Against God and against his Christ. That is it in a nutshell. And before I get carried away and ramble on even more, let's get to Exodus 22, New Living Translation. The protection of property. Verse 1. If someone steals an ox or sheep and kills or sells it, the thief must pay back five oxen for each ox stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is sh struck and killed in the process, the person who killed the thief is not guilty of murder. But if it happens in daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of murder. All right. So you see this? Now, 
the, the these are where our our uh, laws come from. People want to deny this truth, but everything that God is teaching the Israel Israelites right now, the ancient Israelites who are in Africa at the moment right now. Okay, this is where all people have come from. Science has even got that kind of right. You know, so I know, I know science says some other things, so you got to be careful. As long as it lines up with the word of God, you can guarantee it's right, though. The ancient Israelites, so many different people groups have came from Africa. We talked about that earlier, and you can see my other video when I talk about Noah's sons, Ham, Japheth, and Shem, and their families, and which parts of the world that they decided to split up at. And, um... Their families were too big, so they decided Japheth went to the north, Shem went further to the east, and uh, they were on the continent of Africa at this time. So uh, Ham just decided to stay there and move further south. And then, of course, Ham's area, that area is Africa, and the north area is going to be the Mediterranean, and then the northern continents, which is a European area where Japheth went, and then the eastern is the Asiatic Asian type places and the island type places of the sea, which is where um, Shem's family spread to. Okay, so that is how that goes. Shem's brown skin, uh, Japheth was lighter than Shem, and then Ham was the dark skinned uh, individuals. Okay, and so they all went to their respective places. This is not anything new if you've been a student of the Bible or if you've actually read the Bible and you know the, your biblical history. For some people who don't know, though, this may be as a shock and a surprise. It is very different than what the, the racist, evil, communist, uh, um, you know, people, atheistic, scientistic uh, worldview. It's not actually science. It's just an atheistic worldview with science coupled with it. And that's what it is. So it basically a lot of our laws that we have today came from the ancient Israelites and God's telling them what is rightfully theirs, what they can and cannot do. Um, a lot of classes and you have to forgive the professors. It's not their fault. They have to teach what they have to teach. If they teach anything else, they can lose their job and be fired. So you don't want to get into a squabble. If you're going to college right now, don't don't get into a squabble with the professors and college teachers don't do that. They're just doing their job. They're doing what they have to do. Some of them know this. Some of them may not know, but please don't fight them. Just do your business. Get the grade in your class. Eight, pass the test. Do the work. Get the freak out of there. You're not called to argue with a freaking for, for a professor. You're called to share the truth in love with people at certain times. Or you're called to do whatever God has called you to do. As a Christian, we, we spread this truth. Persuade people. Let them know. Have a one-on-one -on -one session. Talk to them. If they're interested, if they're not interested and you're not working, you know, and you're not on the job and you're not, you know, because your boss doesn't pay you to freaking talk about this. You see, I'm doing this video. I'm on my time right now. Nobody's paying me to do this. I'm doing this because I want to, because it's going to help people, right? God has this, and the, o the only reason God's word has lasted the test of time, even when people try to destroy it and stamp it out, evil people have tried throughout the many years of history. God's word still endures. And God even said it in his word, heaven and earth shall pass away. That means heaven is going to pass away. Earth shall be destroyed. Of course, God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth, of course. But my word shall not pass away. Our bodies that we're living in, these tents of flesh, as the Bible called them, will eventually die and pass away and get old. And we're going to have issues <laughs> as we get older. But how many know God's word will never pass away? This is why this is so valuable. It's more valuable than any currency in the whole entire world. And if you guys will listen to what I'm saying, this will revolutionize your life.
I am not just speaking nonsense. I am not just speaking bull crap. My brothers and my sisters, my friends, my enemies, those who like this, those who don't like this, doesn't matter who you are. You're a human being. As long as you're alive on this side and you get your heart right with Jesus Christ, bro, the possibilities are endless for you and you know that your eternal life is taken care of. This life on this side is temporary, man. We're going to die. What, 60, 70 50 years, some of us may die before our time for making stupid decisions and car accidents and drunk and alcohol and partying and all kind of nonsense like that. I've seen it. I've seen them. Guys with so much potential, girls with so much potential, end up dead somewhere. Nobody knows how they died. Car accident, alcohol related, parties. I don't know what they were doing. Ended up doing something that they shouldn't have been doing and it led to their premature demise. Very, very, very sad. Very, very, very sad, but true. That does not have to be you. That does not have to be me. That does not have to be any of us. We can live righteous by listening and reading what this Bible says and not just listening and reading to it, but applying it to our lives. Common sense and wisdom is starting to become a superpower nowadays. People don't have it in the workplace, out of the workplace, in their lives. They, they don't have it anymore. I don't know what, what's happened to society. I mean, we, we can learn things so fast nowadays from watching it on, on the internet and we have so many informations at our fingertips, yet some of the common sense things, like, we're just void of it today in this generation. And it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. Women won't support their husband in marriage. They would rather do what they want to do and stick to their work than actually take care of the home and the children. That's sad. Men don't want to be men anymore. They don't want to take the responsibility. It's too hard, so they would rather be women. And they would rather change their whole lifestyle and say, I'm not fit to be a woman. I mean, I'm not fit to be a man, so I want to be a woman. That's pretty sad when you think about it. I'm not making fun of anybody or I don't have anybody particular in mind when I share these things. I'm just talking about the silliness of the generation and where we're at right now. We really have to look at this and ponder this. You know, I mean, you have people, you know, enabling these young boys to wear dresses. They're not even 18 yet. I mean, if they're going to make that decision, can you let them make that decision on their own? Don't encourage it. That's evil stuff. Got girls wearing guys' clothes. Nobody gives a crap. You got men wearing girls clothes people will start to give a crap then but not as much as they probably should in today's society Uh, you got people just wanting to be what they're not supposed to be you got people wanting to be animals you got people wanting to treat animals better than people you got girls wanting to be guys guys wanting to be girls you got people who don't know what they are so they change every five minutes It just gets crazy. And a lot of these things are first world problems because in the third world countries, people don't have the same issues as the first world problems do. Um, That's a whole different ball game, and I'll talk about that in a different video. But there I go getting sidetracked again, and y'all have to forgive me because I haven't done a video in a long time. So all these things that I have inside of me that has been built up since my last video is coming out now. But anyway, I was talking about these laws. These laws were created here in Africa when the Lord was with the ancient Hebrews telling them how to live their life, what they can and cannot do. And these laws are translated into what we would call the White Castle Laws now that we have in your state, in your land, in your island, wherever you're at. Uh, These laws are um, really, really, really cool. And this is the origin of them right here. So anyway, let's continue on. A thief who is caught must pay in full for everything he stole. If he cannot pay, he must be sold as a slave to pay for his theft. So look, there's another reason why people would be slaves. According to this ancient law, they would be slaves or servants because they did something wrong and tried to steal. See, this is a lot better way of handling it than the freaking Muslim way. The Quran would have you do it. The Quran says, the Sharia law says, if somebody is caught stealing, you cut off their freaking hand. I mean, that's just, just imagine, you're caught stealing because you were hungry, and now you don't even have a hand anymore. I mean, 
just compare the biblical laws to these other laws. I mean, you get to see how not barbaric the Bible is. People claim it's barbaric and old school and just hard and, and just terrible. And they don't even read. So they don't even know. They're just listening to what some atheists said. And they don't fact check and they don't tr truth check in this case. Remember, facts can change, guys. Facts can change. Everybody on social media, and you'll hear this all the time, facts, 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 facts. I shared it in my old videos, in my older videos. Facts are good, but facts can change. For instance, you could be married today, and you could be single tomorrow. God forbid that happens. You could be single today, and you could be married tomorrow. That's a pretty nice addition to your life, right? Hopefully. You'd hope so. I hope, <laughs> you know, you better make sure you know that woman before you do that. You better make sure you guys know each other and, and, and you guys make sure you guys are a good fit because if not, you, you may be single again <laughs> later on. You, who knows? I'm, you know, I'm not wishing that on anybody, but you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, that's a fact and the fact could change. Truths are principles built into creation that will never change. A truth is gravity. You jump off... Um, the Grand Canyon, you jump off Two Lovers Point, okay? You jump off the Empire State Building, all right? You jump off Mount Everest. Gravity is going to freaking pull you down. I mean, unless you're in a plane, unless you're in a plane suit, unless you're in some contraption to have a jet pack or something like that, obviously you're not going to fall, so... You know, if you have a parachute, you will still fall, but you will fall slowly. But you're still going to fall, right? Gravity will pull you down. That is a truth. You cannot deny that. And nobody is willing to risk their life to test it. You, that's just something you need to accept. All right? That is how the Word of God is. The Word of God is truth. It's more than just mere facts. In comparison, facts and truth are totally different. And we got to understand that. We must understand that. Okay. So let's continue on. Verse 4. If someone steals an ox or a donkey or a sheep and it is found in the thief's possession, then the thief must pay double the value of the stolen animal. Verse 5. If an animal is grazing in a field or vineyard and the owner lets it, lets it stray into someone else's field to graze, then the animal's owner must pay compensation from the best of his own grain or grapes. If you are burning thorn bushes and the fire gets out of control and spreads into another person's field, destroying the sheaves or the uncut grain or the whole crop, the one who started the fire must pay for the lost crops. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see how common sense that the Bible actually is? This is not barbaric. This is not hardcore. This is just common sense stuff. You know, and this is back in the Old Testament, man. We're not even in the New Testament yet. But a lot of this stuff could, could just be carried over because of how common sense and how wise and just straight to the point it was. No nonsense, bullcrap way to handle problems and issues that may arise in life. Simple as that. Verse 7. Suppose someone leaves money or goods with a neighbor for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house. If the thief is caught, the compensation is double the value of what was stolen. But if the thief is not caught, the neighbor must appear before God, who will determine if he stole the property. Verse 9. Suppose there is a dispute between two people who both claim to own a particular ox, a donkey, sheep, article of clothing, or any lost property. Both parties must come before God. And the person whom God declares guilty must pay double the compensation to the other. So now, that's, now that is pretty something right there. If somebody cannot get it right, they have to come before God. And God is going to freaking do it for them. Because God is the best one, right? He can see everything. Can't hide anything from God. God can see better in the dark than he can in the daylight, as a matter of fact. You know, you can't hide anything from God. God is always watching. You know, a lot of people like to use that term where I'm at and, you know, God is not sleeping and stuff like that. And, you know, in other words, yeah, God is always watching. That's what that means. Of course, things can be a little bit cliched when you say them over and over and over again. And then people kind of brush them aside like you didn't say nothing all that special. So we got to be careful not to move into cliche territory. But it's true. God can see everything. 
you can hide stuff from people. Heck, you can even hide stuff from your own self for a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My pastor would say this um, about his pastor. The, they both passed uh, recently. About four weeks ago they passed. Slipped into eternity. But he was saying about um, our pastor uh, who, who, you know, eventually he was having, you know, some issues with his mind. He was still a healthy man, but he was having some issues with his mind. His mind was aging probably a little bit faster than his body, right? And he said, hey, one good thing about Alzheimer's is, hey, man, I, I, you can hide your own Easter eggs. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody gets a little laugh about it. He can be so cool about his, you know, mental condition like that. What a guy. You know what I mean? You could joke around like that, but the the thing is, you can't hide anything from God, all right? God sees everything, and this is one thing that they knew very well back in the day, and it was kind of a fearful thing to stand before God, because if you couldn't get this thing right on your own, and now you had to have God come down you know, do, and do this thing, it was kind of like, dude, just get it right. Don't even take it to that level if you don't have to, you know what I mean? And this is why, and, and this, you could say that this was the early form of a grievance policy. If and this grievance policy is in the military and in different forms of organizations and jobs and places, you start at the lowest possible level first. If you cannot handle it, you take it up higher. If you cannot handle it there, you take it up further. If you cannot handle it there, you take it up further. This is how the grievance policies work in the military and in other organizations as well. Keep on taking it up until you get what you need. You know what I mean? Keep on taking it up until you get what you need. You're not trying to be an idiot. You're not trying to be stupid. You're not trying to cause a scene. You're not trying to be a doofus about things. You need something, a need. It's not getting done for whatever reason and you have to keep pushing until you get what you need. You're not asking for anything extra. You're not asking, you know, for, you know, the end all be all you're just trying to get what you need so you can do your job that's it you know what i mean so thank god for these grievance policies and this type of thing and we can see that's where it originated right here okay with the ancient hebrews let's go ahead and uh, let's do this now uh this is verse 10 now suppose someone leaves a donkey ox sheep or any other animal with a neighbor for safekeeping but it dies or is injured or is taken away and no one sees what happened. The neighbor must then take the oath in the presence of the Lord. And if the Lord confirms that the neighbor did not steal the property, the owner must accept the verdict and no payment will be required. But if the animal was indeed stolen, the guilty person must pay compensation to the owner. And if it was torn to pieces by a wild animal, the remains of the carcass must be shown as evidence and no compensation will be required. Verse 14, if someone borrows an animal from a neighbor and it is injured or dies when the owner is absent, the person who borrowed it must pay full compensation. But if the owner was present, no compensation is required and no compensation is required if the animal was rented for this loss is covered by the rental fee. Social responsibility. Okay, so we're moving into social responsibility now. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, verse 16, if a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged to anyone and has sex with her, he must pay the customary bride price and marry her. But if her father refuses to let him marry her, the man must still pay him an amount equal to the bride price of a virgin. Check that out. Check that out. So, you know, premarital sex was not encouraged in this time period. If you wanted somebody... You needed to go and you needed to marry them and you needed to do things right. Okay? And that woman would actually be very thankful because she was probably sick of living under her dad's house at that time. I mean, she loves her father, right? But she was kind of probably sick of being there with her siblings and that time. And she was very happy to be married and to be go and be with a man and get that womanly love that she desires and craves. You know, from a man, right? So... It was just a different time period. Now, I know the, different, the culture is different, man. I mean, you got these apps where you can just hook up and you can date and you can do all sorts of things. And uh, yeah, different generation now. Um, you got women who want to get in relationships and while they're in a relationship, they're looking 
to get in other relationships because they don't like the one they're in and they're trying to look for something better. And then you got guys who just, you know, sadly, you know, you got, you know, a certain culture. They just want to pump and dump. They just want to get the women and then leave. And then, you know, they got what they want. They're gone. And just like that, because they realize that, you know, there's been a false thing painted about marriage relationship and about what it actually is by Hollywood and media and all that stuff. So now people have a very bad view on a man and woman relationship when a man and woman relationship should be awesome. It's a wonderful thing. There was a dignity and respect on a man and woman relationship at one time and now there still is, but not in many circles. In the Christian church you'll find it, in certain other churches you'll find it. People who really uphold that type of lifestyle and live it and are true to it. But nowadays, because people aren't faithful to their vows, it really causes people to just want to break up and not be together and separate for good. And just say, what was I thinking when I got married? I mean, this happens more than we'd like to admit. And it all has to do with the view on marriage that Hollywood portrays, that is portrayed in movies and shows and even, you know, just the reality of it is coming to light about what it really is in this generation. And it's turning a lot of people off to even want to get married. And so that's why these hookup apps and these, these you know, things like that are popular because nobody want to fool around with the bullcrap anymore. Wasting time dealing with family members, wasting time with the whole marriage ceremony, wasting money and time doing that when you still got to live even after the marriage. You know what I mean? People spending all this money on marriage ceremonies and then get divorced in three months. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, when you really think about it, who wants to do that? I, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? And I can't blame people for, <laughs> I kind of really don't blame them for not wanting to get married and doing things the right way. I mean, of course, it's still wrong. Doesn't mean it's not wrong. In God's eyes, I mean, if you do, if you have sex and you're not married, there, there's, you got an issue with God there. And you're going to have to get that thing right and stop doing that. Ask for forgiveness or make sure you get your heart right with God, man. You can't just live any old kind of way and expect God to bless your life. You know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> and so it's just very sad that this is the reality for some people nowadays. Um... Yeah. Anyway, let's move on here. All right. So the dad was in charge. This was a patriarchal society. And you saw what happened with the virgin and the, the guy must still uh, pay the bride, even if the husband doesn't even want him as a son-in-law. Uh, if the father doesn't even want him as a son-in-law. So that's just incredible right there. It goes to show you. Verse 18. You must not allow a sorceress to live. Verse 19, anyone who has sexual relations with an animal must certainly be put to death. So this is how God views people into witchcraft, into sorcery, into the arcane arts. You know, before it was called black magic, it was just called sorcery. That's what it was. Voodoo priests, witchcraft, um, uh, um, witch doctors, they call them. Whack whack doctors is what we call them nowadays. Uh, in some places, they call them different things. Uh, you have the Sarahanu, you have uh, the cultural healers. They go all by different names, but basically, <clears throat> there's natural remedies that are okay, right? But when you start moving into the spiritual arts and you start moving into the uh, spiritual things, and you know, you're not really getting healed. Nothing's really. Uh, being made better. I have some people, they talk to me, they would say, hey, I went to this one healer in my back, dude. No pain. I'm awesome. You know, for about two weeks. And then they have to go back again. Because now they got pain in their freaking arm. And then, then the pain, then it's taken care of. It's gone out of my arm. And then about a week or so, they got to go back. Why? Well, because the pain has now moved in their freaking knee. Oh, okay. Oh, the pain has gone out of my knee. Oh, man, gosh darn it. It's back in my back again. What's going on? You know, they don't link it, you know, that the witch doctor, the whack-whack doctor, the heal, the cultural healer, 
the Sarahanu, whatever you want to call him, he's just having them come back. So he can get that gift. So he can get that little item that they're going to give him. So he can get that little money they're going to tip him on the side. So he can get, I don't know, whatever they want to give him. You know what I'm saying? He keeps you coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? God doesn't do that. When God heals you, He heals you for good. And the only way something could come back to you after God heals you is if you continue to live that life type of lifestyle and live in sin and do some wrong thing and cause, like, like, like I said, people with lung cancer. And I say this at the end of all my videos, if you heard them before. At the end, when we pray, we get down, man. We get down to the nitty-gritty of the situation, of the problem, of the issue. What did Jesus Christ say in the New Testament? The axe is at the root of the problem. You don't just cut down the freaking trunk of the tree. You don't just cut down the branches of the tree. You cut the junk. You nip that at the bud. You get it at the root of the situation. And if God sees that you're, he's not going to heal you of lung cancer. If once you're healed, you plan on smoking from two packs of cigarettes a day to five packs of cigarettes a day. It's not going to work, my friend. Okay. So that's what's being said here. Okay. We get to the nitty gritty of the situation. And yeah, sorceresses and all those things were not welcome. Because usually what a sorceress or a sorcerer was... <clears throat> It was an old backslidden preacher or backslidden somebody who was a part of the, the house of God who, whatever reason, decided to leave to do his own things, to live by his own terms. So now he would craft words in a certain way where it's whatever he, you know, desires. And that could lead to so many, 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 many different other sins. But the root cause of sorcery and we're going to read this in the Bible. It, disobedience. Not doing what God says. To be disobedient to God, you might as well be involved in witchcraft. It is just as bad as sin when God looks at it. Disobedience to the Lord is just as bad as witchcraft. And we're going to read that verse as we get to that part, which we'll get to later. But that's what links to these. This is why a sorceress is, should not be allowed to live. So the sorceress had to be stoned, or the sorceress, if she didn't get stoned, they would excommunicate her, and she would have to leave the camp, and she would be exiled. He or she. A sorceress, you know, a sorceress is a woman, but a sorcerer. Same with the guy, too. No respect to sex. If you are doing practicing these arts, you're not to be around here because we don't need that stuff, and that's just going to muck up everything, right? So, um, okay, continuing on here to verse 20. Anyone who sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. Now, of course, because there were the reason why this had was so um, <clears throat> talked about and fixated on is because you had people you know, sacrificing their babies, sacrificing children to Baal. And we're going to read more about that later. They would sacrifice their children to this, to Baal, which is Satan, right? But this was just in the many forms that Satan has had, the devil. This is who they were worshiping. He was just called Baal. And in certain, um, in certain times in history, he was called Dagon, and certain times he was called um, the fish god. And certain times he was called different things. You know, one by many names, e pluribus unum. You know, that stuff is on our dollar. That's the evil origins as far as that stuff goes. Now, I understand the United States wanted to take that and have it mean something else. But if you really reduce it down to the irreducible and look at what all these meanings mean, it's written in Latin. You know, that's what it means. It's really talking about the devil which is why it's his capstone with his eye on there because he thinks he is the apex and the top of everything you know what I mean he thinks he is the top of the food chain he thinks he is the powerful he thinks he is the predator of predators he thinks he is up there up there he tried to be with God and then got kicked out of heaven for that same freaking attitude and so that attitude still permeates and still spreads through the world like a freaking cancer. This is where you get Hitler from and all these communist, communist leaders and 
all these people and their atheistic worldviews of where human beings come from, about how you know we're evolving and we're getting better and better as time is getting by. But when you actually look at it, we're getting worse and worse as time goes by because of the sin spreading in the world like a cancer. And, um, yeah. So, you know, anyone who sacrifices to any other God other than the Lord, you know, must be destroyed. Take them out, get rid of them. Because we're not going to have that in our camp. If you want to do that, go somewhere else with that. Don't do it here. All right. Verse 21. You must not mistreat or oppress foreigners in any way. Remember, you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. See, so God is giving them a realistic view of how to treat people who are not native to their land. Oh my God, if everyone in every land would treat foreigners like that, what better would that land be if they just treated them like that? So awesome, isn't it? My goodness. Verse 22. You must not exploit a widow or an orphan. If you exploit them in any way and... They tr cry out to me, then I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will blaze against you, and I will kill you with a sword. Then your wives will be widows and your children fatherless. That is a terrible thing. That is a terrible thing. He says, you heard what God said. I don't even have to reiterate that. It speaks for itself. I know this video is going to be a long video. I'm trying to shorten it up, you guys, but oh my God. Treat widows and orphans with respect okay you need to do that because if you if the father's gone it was letting you know how important the father figure is in this chapter right here the mother will not even have a man there's no father so the the wife won't have a husband and the children won't have a father and that's pretty sad because now the children won't get direction on, on what they need to do and they'll grow up with no direction and the boys will probably grow up weak because they don't have a father. They just have a mother figure and that's it. And then the girls will grow up to be strong girls because they didn't get that fatherly love. I mean, it just, the, the absence of a father ruins everything. And God says, if you mistreat a widow or an orphan and they cry out to me, uh, you're going to regret that decision. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is interesting. So interesting to see that. Verse 25. If you lend money to any of my people who are, who are in need, do not charge interest as the money lender would do. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a, secur as a security for a loan, you must return it before the sun set. So basically God is telling you how, you, how we deal money is not going to be the traditional way of how you deal money. You know, don't charge the interest. All right. And this is why I hate freaking credit cards. I don't own a credit card. There have been times, and I even found out that there was even a time where I even got I had a, I had a credit card accidentally. I, I signed up for something. I thought it was a savings program or something like that, a rewards card. Little did I know that rewards card was a credit card. And so months and years go by, and then this, this money is piling up, and then I, now I've got to pay it off. It is freaking insane. I know they say credit cards will raise your credit card, but uh, credit score, but I want to throw this in for free, huh? That FICO credit score, that credit score that you're doing is bull crap. Doesn't even mean anything. All that credit score is, is basically telling you about how it's basically a credit, it's a debt score. That's what it is. It's not even a credit score. It's a debt score. And it so focuses on debt in relation to how your credit score is, not actually any real credit. Real credit is having your own real money saved up in your bank and you can use it to buy the things that you want straight up where you don't even have to use a credit card. If you guys want to know more about that credit card info, uh, check out Dave Ramsey. His videos are freaking awesome and I, I can refer you to him. He is somebody who understands the biblical truth behind money and finances and just helps you make better financial decisions. The guy is incredible. And so... See, you learn so much when you watch my videos. I'm serious, man. People think my videos is dumb because I'm talking about the Bible. I know there's somebody out there who thinks my videos is stupid, thinks my videos is dumb, that this is some just dumb guy rambling on. I don't know what the freak I'm talking about. But there's so much truth you will find in this Bible if you just read it. 
Oh my goodness. And this is the Old Testament, my dudes. We didn't even get to the New Testament yet. Oh my goodness. Oh my Lord. God is good, isn't he? All the freaking time. Let's go ahead and continue. Verse 27. This coat may be the only blanket your neighbor has. How can a person sleep without you? Um, sleep without it. Excuse me. Not you. Without it. Okay. If you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear, for I am merciful. You must not dishonor God or curse any of your rulers. You must not hold anything back when you give me offerings from your crops and your wine. You must give me your firstborn sons. Okay. Now, let me clarify this because I know some people will say, what? Give me your firstborn sons. Actually, let me let me read it on a little more and then I'll clarify it. You must give me your firstborn sons. You must also give me your, the firstborn of your cattle, sheep, and goats. But leave a newborn animal with its mother for seven days. Then give it to me on the eighth day. Okay. <clears throat> so God is talking about tithes and offerings here. Now, we know tithes and offerings is different nowadays. We're in, under the church and under the New Testament. So we do not have to give cattle and the first fruits of our grain and our crops and stuff and our sons and our cattle like they had to do in these days. And when God says, give me your firstborn sons, he doesn't mean human sacrifice, okay? That is a pagan sacrifice. God never asks for human sacrifice. He was testing Abraham a long time ago and back in Genesis, you can read that. I've already shared that. It was just a test. Isaac was not going to be sacrificed. The Lord stopped Abraham from doing it. He saw how faithful he was and he stopped him before he could even harm his son. He didn't harm his son and God never again asked for human sacrifice. If somebody asks for human sacrifice, human blood, a human heart, a human skull, a human brain, human anything, you have to end a human's life in order to appease this whatever you're serving. That's evil. That's the devil. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of the scriptures. Okay. The only sacrifice that God asked for that was God and man all in one, king, priest, and sacrifice, was his only begotten son, the extension of himself, Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk more about that later. Only Jesus Christ could do what he did for our sins. No one else could do it. No one else was tough enough, righteous enough, loving enough, kind enough, merciful enough, and no one fit the description of an all-sufficient Savior. Because <laughs> if there was somebody, then Jesus wouldn't have had to go do it. The fact is, Jesus had to do it. And this is one of those instances where, hey, if you want to get something done, you got to do it yourself, right? If you want to get something done right, you got to do it yourself. That is the instance of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and them doing what they did and having Jesus step out of eternity into time to come to live and toil like us, to die and be our sacrifice. Now, moving on here. <clears throat> Verse 31, and this is the last verse, and we're finished after this. You must be my holy people. Therefore, do not eat any animal that has been torn up and killed by wild animals. Throw it to the dogs. Now, this is something that uh, was also said, and I think the other verse, too, as a matter of fact. If I realize it, I think it was this was said before, because I remember reading it. I remember reading something like that uh, before. But anyway, that is the end of this. So, so this video won't be forever. I'm going to go ahead and gonna move, we'll move, move over now. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to move over to our prayer phase now. So we're going to get everybody in a position to receive a healing or something good from God. But before that, we got to make sure our hearts is right. So if you are listening to this for the first time or, you know, you don't consider yourself a Christian, but you say, you know, I'd like to be a Christian. I'd like to have a relationship with the Lord God. I'd like to read the Bible more on my own. I'd like to live and know more about this Christian way, the way of the Lord God most high. Then, you know, I, I want to get my heart right with Jesus right now. If that is you, you will pray with me. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. And I'm asking that you come inside of my heart. Live inside of my heart. Live inside of me. Change me from the inside out so that I can be more and more like you each and every day for myself and my family and those around me. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All of heaven rejoices when one person gets their heart right with Jesus Christ. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. 
This is an awesome day for you, my, my brother and my sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I suggest you keep on listening to the Word of God. Keep reading it. There's so many different things you could listen to on here. You don't have to listen to my page, but I would appreciate it if you would. Um, so many other people you could listen to. Whoever you listen to, just make sure they're talking about the whole truth, the whole Bible. They're not leaving anything out. Because you have certain folks that will only talk about certain parts of the Bible, but they won't talk about the whole thing. I am sharing the whole thing. It is a very big undertaking. It's very vast. It's very huge because I'm not even halfway done. I, and I haven't even scraped the surface. But I'm having fun doing this and I hope you're having fun listening. This is the truth. This is what gets my blood going. This is what keeps me going. The truth of the Word of God and it shall never be destroyed. I might, I'm probably going to be destroyed one day. My body's going to eventually die but my spirit will live on and it's going to be with Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be. And because you got your heart right, the same thing can happen to you as well. Now we're going to move over to the backsliders. Okay, you guys have been Christian before, but you turned away from the faith for whatever reason. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe leadership hurt you. Maybe you've been wrongfully accused of doing something. We've all had a hand in that bag. Heck, it's happened to me. It's happened to me. But hey, I'm cool. I don't hold anything against anybody. You shouldn't either. All right? There's maybe people who might uh, think you did something and just spread their rumor. That's not even true. In our next chapter, uh, Genesis, uh, I mean Exodus 23, we're actually going to get into where they talk about rumors and stuff like that and how to stay away from that. The devil is a liar, and he was the first one to make rumors in heaven, trying to tell everybody that God was a tyrant. That's why he got one-third of the angels to go on his side. And we all know what happened to them. They got their behinds kicked out of heaven. They got their behinds kicked out real good, too. God don't have any plate room for somebody else trying to be him in his heaven. There is only one God, and his position is not up for grabs. Um, but anyway, you're a backslider, and you want to come back. And you know that God could come back at any moment in time. You see these terrible things happening around the world, and it causes a sense of urgency to rekindle in your spirit. And you say, i got to get my heart right. Don't hesitate, my friend. Pray now. Get that thing right. You know what you need to do. Pause this video if you need to. We're going to move over into the Christian's phase now. Okay, Christian, you know what's happening. Maybe you don't know all that's happening, but God is speaking to you about something you need to do. Get it right. Maybe you did something wrong to somebody. You're going to have to go ahead and get that right. Just because you're a Christian don't mean you're exempt. We can all veer off and go to our own little separate ways for a moment, but God is always there to lead us back. Okay? And you pray as long as you need to. Pause this video if you need to. Okay. Well, now we got the sinner. It's turned into the Christian. We got the backslider that's coming back home. And we got the Christian that's maintaining and keeping everything right with them. Everybody's heart is right. We are now in a position to receive something from the Most High God. This is where things get interesting. And this is where we proclaim and demonstrate the truth of the Word of God. So. Now, what is it that you need? God knows what you need even before you ask, but he likes us to ask because he wants us to vocalize our needs before him, okay? I got needs, all right? <laughs> I'm sure you got needs as well. We all have needs. God knows what we need. He knows what we need. He knows who we need. He knows all that we need, okay? And God wants to help you right now. Maybe some of you guys need a healing, Okay, some of you guys are going to have to go to the doctor after we pray with you to see, you know, to test yourself and have him run tests to see if you're healed. Some people are going to have to get rid of that betel nut. They're going to have to get rid of the chew. They're going to have to get rid of the lime. You're going to have to get rid of the alcohol. You're going to have to get rid of the cigarettes, cigars. You're going to have to get rid of those things, whatever you have in your house that is causing you to uh, not be truthful. Or that's causing you to stray away from the word. That's causing you to do the things that you're trying not to do, right? Uh, you're going to have to get rid of, you know, certain things. You know, you got to get rid of those things. So, you know what it is. And maybe God is dealing with people. You need to give more to the church. Give more. You got a nice stockpile of money. You need to give more. You need to donate more. Donate more to your church. Give more to, you know, an organization that is in the missionary field and they're sending missionaries out. You know, you donate more to, to you know, my 
my, my PayPal if you want. You know what I'm saying? I mean, God is speaking to people in different ways. You just be obedient to what God is telling you, okay? Um, there's some people that you're in a relationship you know you shouldn't be in. You're going to have to cut that thing off, sadly. You, you guys are not married. You're going to have to get married. There's some people who are... Um, You know what you need, right? God even knows what you need more than you do. And so pray about it. That's, that's the good thing about prayer is even when we don't know what to pray for, you know, God's, God can help us because he knows what we need. You know what I'm saying? Some people need to get a little bit uncomfortable. Some people need to get comfortable because they've been uncomfortable for too long. Some people need to have the reality of life hit them. Some people need to be shielded from the harshness of life for a time. And, and heal and get back up on their feet and continue to do what they need to do for themselves and their families. People are at many different stages and situations in their life, but whatever it is, God knows what we need. I need you guys to vocalize what you need before God right now. We're going to all pray together. Pray in English, pray in your native tongue, or pray in your heavenly language if you know uh, about that, in the spirit, of, in tongues. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. Um... You can, people, there are some people who you're fit as a fiddle. You're right as rain. You're just standing in for somebody who is ill, who is sick, who cannot hear this video, or who cannot pray for themselves. They may be unconscious right now. Um, whatever the case may be, you know, God is going to help you right where you're at. You, let's not put God in a box, man. He can do whatever. He can heal wherever. You know what I'm saying? God is powerful. He is not like us humans who is limited by distance and time. God created time. He created distance. So in order to create those things, you can't be limited by those things, right? <laughs> so come on, let's pray right now. Let's do it. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're doing right now, Heavenly Father, in the lives of these people listening, in the lives of these listeners. We thank you, Lord God, for my brothers and my sisters, my friends, those people who do not know anything of what's going on right now in the world. They're not even sure of anything. But Lord God, you're going to help them to be sure. You're going to help them. I thank you for those, Lord God, that have prayed and they're believing in you as much as I'm believing in you right now. Heal them, touch them in the area where they need to be healed and touched. Oh Lord God, I pray for finances. I pray for raises on the job, increases on the job. And Lord God, employment for those who don't have it. And I thank you, Lord God, for those who are employed right now. I thank you, Lord God, for those bosses and those good bosses, managers and leads that are helping um, us in this time, to, in their positions to do what they need to do to help us to have an awesome working environment. And I thank you, Lord God, may their families be blessed as well. Pray for workplaces and homes all over your area, wherever you are, Lord God, and we combat and fight against this COVID disease in the name of Jesus. By your precious blood, there is nothing too hard for you, Lord God. You died on the cross and paid for this in with your blood, Lord God, that we wouldn't have to be afraid and fearful of this nonsense that the enemy is trying to spread over this world. I thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' powerful name, let it be done. Amen and amen. I thank you guys so much for listening. Like I said, if you guys would like to donate, you can. I will leave a link in the description to donate uh, to keep these things going during these times. I thank you so much for those people who are listening um, to these. I appreciate your listening. Appreciate your views. Like and subscribe if you're not uh, subscribed already. Can't do this without your support. May you and your family be blessed and may you prosper in all your endeavors. Thank you very much. Stay safe out there.